Yes? Did you speak? Can I help you, sir? I beg it. Oh, oh, no, thanks. I'm just going into the gambling room. I'm afraid not, sir. Not? I take it you're not a member of this establishment, sir? Uh, no, no, I'm not. But I have a friend who is. They always have. Well, he's not a friend, exactly. Uh, I mean, we share an apartment. That is, he uses it in the daytime, and I use it at night. How cozy. Yeah, well, he asked me to get something for him, and I've got it here, and I just want to give it to him. If you'll leave it with me, sir, I'll make quite sure that he gets it. I can't. Oh. No. I mean, it's a car. It's outside. My gosh, the thing stretches from... Uh, well, what name? Penderel. Tom. M. N. O. P. P. A. No, 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 not, not, uh, not Penderel. Not Penderel. No, oh, that's me. I mean, my name is... I'm Pendrel. Tom Pendrel. His name is Fem. F. D-E-F. Fabian Fellows. Hmm. There is a Mr. Fem. Yes, I know. Casper Fem. He's my friend. Well, not a friend exactly. You see, he put this ad in the Times. Someone to share a flat. I answered the ad. It wasn't please, a day before... Please, please. You go straight in. Oh, thanks. But no gambling, you understand? Oh, not me. I'm American. Yes. Come on. Have a cocktail. Hmm. Banco. 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 Ah, uh, Mr. Fem. Casper, there you are again, just like always. Hello, Thomas Deboy. Nice of you to drop in and bring me luck. No, no, I brought you the car. The one you bought for me. It's a beauty, a beauty. And it's American? Oh, yes, American all the way. I've always wanted a foreign car. <laughs> and this is the best. I never represent an inferior product. Banco de quatre mille. Suivi. Suivi, sir. How much is that? Just a few pounds. It's 4,000 to be exact. 4,000? Why, that's $12,000. No, Phil Abarco. Oh. <gasps> 
Thank you, thank you. I'll pass now. Thank you so much. Fancy all this money for me. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, Casper, um, I'm sorry you lost. You did bring me luck. Bad. Sorry. That's all right. Does it really have 300 horsepower? More. It's outside, it's all yours, and it's ready to go. Ready to go? Yes, I'm almost ready. Thomas, come with me. I must have a private word with you. Thomas, you've been sharing my flat now for a month. Have things been satisfactory? Well, sure, Casper. I mean, you're always gone at night, and I sell cars all day. Exactly. Exactly? Yes. Don't you think it's a strange arrangement? Strange? Thomas, what do you do at night when I'm not there? I do? Well, Casper, I sleep. Oh, well, sometimes I go out with a girl. Dining, clubs, movies. I like movies and girls. Your nights sound wonderful. Casper, what do you do at night? I mean, where do you go? What do you do? I go back. Back? Back there. Back where? I'm already late now. Thomas, you're my friend. My only friend. I need your help. Anything I can do. Every night while you're, you're living, I go back to Femme Hall, and that's where it's going to happen. Casper, what's going to happen? Something I'm afraid of. Humpty Dumpty sat in a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. What? They delivered a coffin today. Who? It's almost time. Thomas, you must come down to Femme Hall. I can explain everything there. Femme Hall? Where's that? Dartmoor. Dartmoor? It's my ancestral home. Dartmoor? It's a lovely drive. And you can spend the weekend with me. And that way you'll meet my cousin. She'll like you. You're likable. Am I? And you'll drive my new car down right away. Oh, you will say yes, won't you? Well, I... It's a beautiful house. Long, rambling, all the conveniences. And my cousin, she's beautiful also. She is, huh? How many carburetors? Your cousin? No, my car. Uh, oh, two, two. She's just as lovely as Fem Hall. Your car? No, my cousin. And what she needs is someone like you, new blood, that sort of thing, especially just now. Oh, Thomas, you must come. I'm frightened. I need your help. Casper, you're my friend. Of course I'll come. Thank you. Oh, it's late. It's very late. I must fly. Well, if you're ready to leave, let's go. No, when I say fly, I mean literally by aeroplane. I rent one. It's much faster. But, Casper, why don't you drive down with me? Don't forget, you brought me bad luck. Huh? See you. Drive carefully now. I... Uh...
Is someone there? Oh. If you are there, come out. I'm not coming out. I'm coming out. Stop! Who are you? Casper. Is that you, Mr. Femme? Yes, I'm Mr. Femme. But I don't know you. Hands up. Keep coming. Well, you... You're not Casper. No. Are you a friend of his? Yeah, yes, I am. He invited me down here. Honest, he did. Uh, you see, I share a flat with Casper. Well, I, I mean, he lives in the daytime and I live at night. I see. My name is Potiphar Fem. I'm Casper's uncle. Perhaps, Mr. Pender, you had better come with me. I must apologize, Mr. Pender, for your abrupt entrance. See, it, it's an old house, old and dark. Yes, I see. Yeah. You know, I potter sometimes. The trap door at the entrance hasn't worked right for a hundred years. Used once to discourage visitors. I fixed it, you see. Works very well now, doesn't it? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, yes. <laughs> Ooh, next time, don't use the knocker. Ring the bell. Yes, I will. I wonder what I'm going to say to Casper. Whatever you wish, Mr. Pendrell. No, you don't understand. You see, something terrible happened. Yes, it was terrible. Oh, you heard, you know? Of course, a frightful crash. I didn't mean for it to happen. I don't even know how it happened. I guess it was all that rain. Oh, 40 days and 40 nights. Rain came. Beg your pardon? Casper's in here. Ah. He fell just an hour ago, all the way from the top of the landing. He was very broken. But, but... Yes, I know how you must feel. Last respects. Well, I... I leave you alone with him. He's been expecting you. No, 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 please. Mr. Padano... Sorry I brought you bad luck. It was a beautiful car. It wasn't my fault. Really, it wasn't. All I did was push against the gate. Just a little bit. Excuse me. But it was insured. I mean, you won't have to worry about that. Well, naturally, you won't have to. I mean... I wish someone would shut your eyes. Casper? <laughs> I thought you'd left. No. No, I mean, I heard you crying. Yes, I I've been sitting over there. It seems so long now, since we brought him here. You're a friend of Casper's. Yes, I, I, I was his friend. Well, I mean, well, I sell cars. I mean, I, I, I sold him a car. He advertised for a roommate, and I moved in with... You must be his cousin. I'm Cecily Femme. I'm Tom Penderell. You're American. Yeah, how'd you know? Casper said he'd met an American in London. I guessed you must be him. You're very brave to come here. I am? He didn't fall, you know. Somebody did this to him. Yes, he told me he was in danger. Did he? What else did he tell you? Just that he needed my help. He doesn't need it now. 
No. Mr. Pendrell, if you are who you think you are and who I think you are, you mustn't stay here another moment. Something terrible is happening here. You've got to leave before the others find out. The others? Others. The family. You must leave while there's still time. Well, what about you? Oh, please hurry before he gets back. No, not without you. Miss Femme Casper wanted me to meet you. That's why I'm here. No, I'm afraid. Of me? Oh, no. Mr. Pendrell, you have a car. Get in it and drive away. No, it's a wreck. I pushed against the gate and something fell on it and the whole front is smashed. Well, then you must walk, Mr. Pendrell. This is your last chance. You must leave before he gets back. I don't understand. I don't understand. Yes. Didn't take me long. Hey, how about that? We make our own electricity here. I've been repairing the generator, the storm, flooded it. Who is this? Oh, may I present my Uncle Roderick Femme? This is Mr. Tom Pendrell. He was a friend of Casper's. Really? Casper had some very strange friends. Were you one of them? Uh, no, I'm not strange. I'm American. From America. It couldn't be. No. You'll be hungry. We'll be having dinner soon. Well... Oh, well, Mr. Pendrell feels he really must leave Femme Hall now. He really must. Oh, no, no. Good gracious, no. I wouldn't hear of it. Couldn't possibly let you go now, Mr. Pendrell. You know, it's not every day that we have an American for dinner. Such a treat for us all. I'm sure the others will be delighted. The others? The others. Hello. May I introduce a friend of Casper's, Mr. Pendrell? Oh, I am Casper's mother, Mr. Pendrell. Such a surprise to find he had a friend. We're having you for dinner. <laughs> Delicious. There isn't much time left, Mr. Pendrell. There isn't much time. There isn't? <laughs> Morgana. Morgana, this is Mr. Pendrell. Uh, how do you do? I'll do better. Now that you're here. You will? I'm sure she will. Shall we have dinner, Uncle Roderick? Yes, I think we could start. Enjoying your food, dear visitor? Agatha cooked it. It was Casper's favorite. He's not like the other one. The other one only eats raw things. Another one? Another two, but let's not talk about it now. Back to work, back to work. The time is almost at hand. You'll be at the gathering, Potiphar. Naturally, naturally. Mustn't miss that. I want to hear about you, Mr. Penn. What you do and what it's like. Like? Yes. Out there. Outside. Well, uh... Enough of that talk, Morgana. Sometimes you behave as if you wanted to leave Femme Hall. You don't want to leave, do you? No. No. No, Roderick. 
Well, then. You mean you like it here? <laughs> I mean, you like all this? Well, maybe I didn't put it the right way. I... Oh, but you have, Mr. Pendrell. Very frank of you. Quite American. Yeah. What Uncle Roderick means is that you're quite right. I am? It's not that we want to stay at Fem Hall, Mr. Pendrell. It's just that we must. <laughs> we must. Exactly. We have to stay. A delicious meal, Agatha. Perhaps I should explain, Mr. Pendrell. You might be interested in the secrets of an old house. You coming along, Agatha? No, I think I'll just go and knit somewhere. This old, dark house, you know, has stood like a fortress through generations of them, built to withstand flood, tempest, war, and strife. All to respect the wishes of my great-great-grandfather, Morgan Fenn. You heard of him before? The pirate. Morgan. The Morgan the pirate? Precisely. Here he is. Morgan Fenn the father. The founder of our little family. Such a lovely creature. You're lovely. I still don't understand why you must all live here. Quite simple. Before they hanged him, you see, Morgan repented. They hanged him just the same, naturally. All the arrangements have been made. They gave him time to make a will. In order to prevent any member of the family ever again flying the pirate flag, he had this fortress built right here in the middle of the marsh, as far away from the sea as possible. His descendants only inherit the fortune, as long as they reside in the house. But living here is a problem, Mr. Pendrell, a great problem. You see, there were provisions in the will. Clause one. Any member of the family refusing to live here loses all rights to the fortune. Two. That any member of the family who is not home by midnight every night loses all right to inheritance. Three. That the femme fortune, all of it, is left to the house that the will can never be changed unless the house dies. Only then can the fortune be divided among the remaining survivors. Well, how can a house die? Did you ever try burning it? I did once. You can't burn solid rock. So what do you use for money? I mean, how do you live? Once a year, we divide the interest of the capital. On the anniversary of great-great-grandfather's hanging. Perhaps you knew about that already. How would I know about the will? Anything strike you, Mr. Pendrell? Same nose, same mouth, same hairline? Yes, I do see the resemblance. Of course, you're fuller in the face than he is. The resemblance isn't to me. It's to you. I don't think I told you Morgan had a daughter. She ran away with another pilot before the will was made. An American pilot. If she'd had children, and she probably did have, in which case, of course, her heirs would stand to inherit a substantial portion of the fortune. You are American, aren't you, Mr. Pendrell? Do you sail at all? Now, listen. Just because you think I look like your great-great... like him, you surely don't think I'm one of you? Oh, I hope not. That would be most unfortunate for all of us. You say your name is Pendrell. Her pilot's name was Blackbeard. Of course, that wasn't his full name, you understand. It could easily have been Blackbeard Pendrell. Not very likely, but then you must admit it's rather a coincidence. You're coming here tonight, of all nights. What's so special about tonight? Tonight is the anniversary of great-great-grandfather's hanging. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Casper Fenn together again. It's Casper. No, it couldn't be. It must be the other. No, it's Casper. A mother hen knows her chick. Four, six, the bank wins. Gay go up and gay go down. Ring it is the bells of London it town. It is. Oranges and lemons, oranges and lemons, oranges and lemons, oranges and lemons. Why? 
It's just a tape. A tape, Mr. Pendrell? Yes, his voice on a tape machine. Oh, how very ingenious. It was, Casper. I know it was. <laughs> More wool, please, Mr. Pendrell. You're a bright young man. Very like my Casper. Knitting relaxes one, you know, particularly in a time of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little more. No, oh, I'm sorry. What are you making? Oh, I'm not making anything. No, I just start at the beginning and uh, knit to the end. <laughs> it's sure to turn into something. Oh, yeah. Knitting is my life, you see. And hands should never be idle. You do a lot of it, huh? Last year, I knitted about uh, 150 miles. You knit miles? Of wool, <laughs> yes. Many miles and much time. I capture time and space in my stitches. You know, sometimes I wonder what would happen if I stopped. Happen to you? No, no, not to me. To the world. Is that you, Roderick? To all of us. The roads are completely awash, Mr. Penderall. Well, surely I could walk to the village? There are marshes between Fem Hall and the village. Man might wander for days and never find his way. You must stay the night. Oh, but Uncle Roderick, if Mr. Penderall wants to leave, I... Too dangerous. Oh, well, if it's dangerous, I... Come along. Cicely and I will show you to your room. Yeah. Oh, uh, keep knitting. My target next year is 200 miles. <laughs> <laughs> we call this the Peacock Room, Mr. Pendrell. Oh, yeah, it's very uh, cheerful, charming. Uh... Yes. <laughs> I think you'll be quite warm and comfortable here. Here, yeah, cozy. We shall expect you at the gathering. The gathering? Oh, every night at midnight we all meet in the drawing room. It's the custom, you see, so we're all sure everyone is in the house. If one of us is absent, you know the penalty. I do? Forfeiture, Mr. Pendrell. See you later. Oh, Mr. Pendrell, I do so wish you'd left while you had the chance. Yeah, so do I. Well, I mean, you're in danger, too. How sweet of you to consider me. Oh, I couldn't do otherwise, Miss Pham. Cecily. Cecily. Tom? Eleven o'clock. Oranges and lemons say the bells of St. Clement's. Well, that's what Casper said. No, he was always making little jokes like that. He used to leave notes lying around and... Oh, that funny tape recording downstairs. Well, what does it mean? Oranges and lemons. Oh, it's a, it's a nursery rhyme. We used to recite it as children. Oh. It's a, a little song children sing to all the different bells of the London church steeples. We have so many clocks in this house, and they all told the hour, so we named them after the different churches. That was St. Clement's. I see. Cecily, you're... St. Martin's. Very... Whitechapel. Sweet. Mr. Pendron. Tom. Cecily, don't tire our guests. I must go now. Till later. Thank you. Some hot water. Oh, thanks very much. Aren't you going to wash? Uh, yeah, 
Take off your shirt. My shirt? Well, you can't wash without taking your shirt off, can you? Oh, no. No, of course not. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, let me help you. Oh, thank you. That's all right. I, I can do it. Thank you very much. Oh, that's fine. Works, yeah. uh, yes. That's fine. <laughs> I'll just roll up my sleeves. Yes. Yes, roll up your sleeves. You're strong. Oh, I exercise. I'm sure you do. Up every morning. I get out there and look he's uh he's in the army. <laughs> You, um, well, you must be very lonely here. Well, I mean, uh, all alone. Oh, you have no idea. What a low. Every night in this house, just a whole family of friends. Well, you do. Uh... Don't you have any boyfriends? Yes, oh, you were stupid. Oh, no, they, they were all from the village. I always had to be home by 12 o'clock. Well, things were just getting started, and I had to stop. Mm. 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 Ah, Excuse me. <sighs> You're damp. Oh, yeah, the rain. Let me press them for you. My pants? Mm. Well, give them to me. Uh, <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> Tom, why did you come to them? Oh, oh, well, I... Casper invited me. He wanted me to meet his cousin. His cousin? Yeah, Cecily. Casper was my cousin, too, you know. Oh, really? Morgana. Morgana! Mr. Femme? Cecily! My tie!
Said about the car. I'm sorry if I, or because I brought you bad luck. Well, I tried to get here to help you. Honestly, I did, but I was too late. Look, it was a beautiful car. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll fix it all up, like new, and you can take it with you. I must tell you something. Yes, yes. How they killed you, and now they're trying to kill me. See? Acid. He won't stop at anything. You? You're alive. Please, I'm a gentleman. But you're dead. Not a bit, not a bit. Casper, you're dead. Casper's dead. I'm not. I'm Jasper, Femme. Casper was my twin. Didn't they tell you about Casper and Jasper? No. Humpty and Dumpty, Mother used to call us. Now there's just Dumpty left. Me? You mean you're next? Yes, that's why I've been hiding. But who killed your brother? Uncle Roderick. Uncle, Uncle Roderick? If he can kill us all off, he'll have all the Femme money. You see, he doesn't mind living at Femme Hall. He likes it here. You think he put that acid in my room? Come on, Dumpty. Oh, Jasper, we're going to confront your Uncle Roderick with some strong evidence. Here. I'll show you proof. May I? You see, I was. Oh, that's better. I was just going to wash my hands, and when I leaned over to get the soap, my tie fell in the water, just like that. When I pulled it out, the tie was gone. It had been eaten away. It's all wet. Wet? Well, look at this one. No, no, no! Water, wet, it's just water. Water? Water. But there was acid. Somebody... If you don't mind my asking you, who are you? I'm Tom Penderel from America, and I hate the sea. Well, that's all right, then. What's the time? I can't be late. Late? Uh, plenty of time. Be careful, my friend. Dear. I'm not Casper. I'm Jasper. Oh, you are so alike. Or you were. Mother, we were twins. Of course. I remember. Mother, I'm so terribly afraid. Is that why you keep hiding? Now, you must have regular meals. You've got to keep up your strength. I can't eat. I'm too frightened. Well, that's all the more reason, because it's not good to be frightened on an empty tummy. No, Mother. Now, promise me, you'll come in and have your meals regularly. It's a good boy. And then you can run away and, you know, hide as much as you like. What are you frightened of? Uncle Roderick, he's going to kill me. Oh, nonsense, dear. You're talking nonsense. He's much too nice. And he's very fond of you, I know. 
He's going to kill us all. Jasper, you're not being very kind. You as well. Oh, your uncle would never think of doing a thing like that. Hello, Roderick. We're just talking about you. Oh, uh, hello, Uncle. There you are. I'll see you at the gathering. Agatha, have you seen the acid I used to clean my gun? No, oh, dear, should I? Where did you leave it? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Agatha, you haven't. No, you couldn't have it. Have you? I know what you're thinking, and the answer's no. Oh. Yes, I think it is. You feel all right, don't you? Perfectly. Well, um... Is this for me? No, it's not for anyone. Just my way of expressing myself. You see, um, these were good days. These were bad days. This was a particularly beastly day. Agatha, I believe you'll go on knitting right to the grave. There are happier ways of expressing that kind of thing under the circumstances, but of course you are quite right. It's been a great solace to me through everything. The day I lost my earrings, the day we lost Mother, the war, the house, the drains, my poor Humpty, and this rain goes on as if it never wanted to stop. So I just keep on knitting. And you have your guns, don't you? True. But you haven't been using them lately, have you? Is something wrong? No. Perhaps there just isn't anything very nice to shoot at. I have a feeling there's going to be. Quite soon. Oh, good. Well, it's nearly time. You coming along? No, dear. I'll just get to the end of the row. You won't be late, will you? Of course not, silly. <laughs> So good of you to be present after your harrowing experience. <laughs> Thanks for the tie. It was Casper's. Oh. There was acid, Mr. Fem. For you, Mr. Pendrel, or for one of us. Well, the basin was switched. You might have switched it, Uncle Roderick. Nonsense. I hope you don't leave us, Tom. I do like you. And I hope Mr. Pendrel will remember that it was you, Morgana, who brought him his basin. It was already filled and waiting when I picked it up. I'm glad I didn't ask for a bath. Not late. Not late. Not a bit. How are you, Mr. Pendrel? It's almost time. Time? Not yet, Roderick. But soon. Very soon. Ah! This is my brother, Morgan Fem. Yeah, I've already had the pleasure. He hasn't spoken to any of us for 15 years. He eats alone in his room. He doesn't shave very well. I don't think he likes us. Well, everyone's here but Aunt Agatha. Agatha is never late. No one is ever late. Mother knows what being late would mean. Mother! Hurry up, it's almost time. Agatha has exactly seven seconds. Agatha, no time to play games. Agatha! Time! No, no, that clock's always fast. That's fast, too. St. Giles. Time! Agatha isn't present. Therefore, under the rules of the will, she forfeits her share. You hear that, Morgana? You hear that, Cecily? She forfeits! She forfeits! Mother never spent her money on anything but wool. She hoarded every penny. And now it'll come to us. Agatha forfeits! Agatha forfeits! How can you be so mercenary? Are you going to turn down your share? No. She can't have gone far. We should really try to find her. Look!
must have been murder. She always knitted so carefully. Two sticks and an apple. Say the bells of Whitechapel. There's nothing else on it. Did you play the whole thing? It was you. You killed her. You always wanted more than your share to feed that nasty vice of yours, your gun collection. Gun collecting a nasty vice? You and your beastly potted palms? Your insipid, ridiculous orchids? Oh, please, stop it. Tom, please, would you help us? What should we do? One of us is a murderer. What can we do? Call the police. All the lines are down. I'll be very glad to go. None of us can leave now. Even you might be guilty. Me? Why not you? Yes, why not you? How do we know you really were invited here? Why, Casper asked me. You said you were Casper's friend. He never said anything about you. Well, we were living in the same flat. I mean, he had it in the daytime and I had it at night. That sounds most peculiar. Yeah, I guess it does. You can't expect us to believe that. Casper never made friends easily. Besides, there's that uncanny resemblance between you and our great, great, great... Now, wait a minute. You're trying to shift the blame, Mr. Femme. I wasn't even in the house when Casper fell. What's more, you're the one who stands to gain by killing off your family. Well, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going for the police. Oh, Tom, don't. Oh, don't be silly. Tom, please, don't be hasty. Don't go. Mr. Pendrell, the nearest house is five miles away. You'll never make it. Somebody's got to do something, and I'm going to do it. I wouldn't. Wait. You no. can't stop me. I'm going to get the police. <laughs> uh. lost you, Mr. Pendrell. That would have been most unfortunate. I'm going for the police and nobody's going to stop. Oh. Mm. oh, my poor Tom. My fault, Mr. Pendrell. Entirely my fault. I'm completely responsible. I should have worked out a way to close the trap door once someone got it open. I'm sorry I had to be so abrupt with you just now, but we can't be too careful. First thing in the morning, we'll send for the police. First thing in the morning. Promise. And now you ought to get a good night's rest. If you need anything, we'll be downstairs. Come along, everybody. <laughs> Morgana. No idea what living here is like. All I can remember since I was a child is being locked in at night, never able to leave. It's like living in a tomb. Does the money mean that much to you? Not anymore. I've seen what it's done to the others. I watched normal people slowly change, twisted by this house. You talk of this house as if it were a person. It is. Oh, you don't believe that, Cecily? Houses aren't alive. Not only alive, but evil. Still, there's no need to worry. My family is here. That's reassuring. Oh, if that's Uncle Morgan. Tom, he's furious you're here. He thinks you're going to take away Morgana. He, he might become dangerous. Again. What do you mean, again? The last young man that came here tried to take Morgana away. Yeah, what happened? No, no, don't tell me. We heard screams in the night, and then... Well, he never was found.
better get some rest. Do you think you'll be able to sleep? Yeah, I'll count corpses. such beautiful hair. Why do you wear it in a crew cut? Hmm? I not to ask Penelope! Penelope, there you are. I've been searching all over for you. I'm sorry, Mr. Pendrel. Penelope got loose. She's perfectly harmless. Naughty girl, bothering Mr. Pendrel. Which one of the family is she? She isn't related. Oh, I see what you mean, Mr. Pendrel. Very amusing. What's a hyena doing in this house? Penelope is one of a pair, Mr. Pendrel. One of many. You mean there are more? Many more. You collect hyenas? That's silly, Mr. Pendra. I have hyenas because the world is coming to an end. Oh, well, that explains it. Then. You're just as batty as the rest of them. Nonsense. I've calculated it to the instant. You hear that? It's just the beginning. The beginning of what? Pick up that book, Mr. Pendra. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Why, it's, uh... Of course. Turn to Genesis 7, 17 and 18. Genesis? 7. Now read it to me. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went, went upon, upon the face, face of, of the waters. waters. You see? Just like it was before. And the ark went... You mean you've made... Where is it? Look! There. Forty nights, the rains came. It started again now. How do you know it'll float? We've hems are shipbuilders. When 
the end comes, the ark will be ready. Well, there, there, Benjamin. No noise now. We'll soon be away. Excuse me, Willie. Come. I have something else to show you. Something else. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Something for the man who has everything, eh? Mine. Mr. Pendrell, you see there's just one animal missing. Eh? A pair of people to repopulate the earth. People, but Cecily and I, we're not even engaged. Cecily? Who said Cecily? No, I mean Morgana. A woman, warm, vibrant. Uh, you mean, oh, Morgana. Oh. Uh, absolutely. No, no, I'm Absolutely. Not. A perfect mate for you. A mother for a new race of femmes. Yes, yes, that's just what the world needs. There, you see, it's beginning to rise. It looks like it's sinking. I must go topside. My charts, my sextant. You and Morgana would be very comfortable there when we say. Well, I... Listen, hey, what if... Uh, just as batty as the rest of them. Uh, I'm not mating with Morgana. Honest, I'm not. That was just one of Uncle Potiphar's jokes. Really, Morgana? Uh, she doesn't even like me. Honest, she doesn't. I'm not her type. She likes strong, silent men with beards. I shave. Look. Potiphar! to leave them all. Well, now you can finish me off. Go ahead. Shoot. Shoot me. It's better than going this way. 
I can't stand here all night. Get hold of the gun and I'll pull you out. Pull? You'll pull? Not push? Promise? You were shooting at me! I wasn't shooting at you, I was shooting at Morgan. He was right behind you all the time. I want to warn you, Morgan can be dangerous. The last fellow Morgana fancied disappeared right there. But I can rely on you not to do anything silly, eh? Oh. Get back to them Hall! Quick, march! Grandfather was a big man. That's you! Excuse me, listen, Father, for where did you disappear to? Disappear? I did no such thing. I came back here for my chance. What's you? Really, you mustn't catch cold. Excuse me. I'll mull your wine, just the thing. All my animals must have perfect health. <laughs> uh, feeling better? Oh, yes. Look, Roderick, just because you pulled me out of that mud doesn't mean I've crossed you off the list. You could still be the one who's doing all this. Of course I could. So could you. That's why I'm keeping this. And I mean to use it. I'm going to guard the door. I want to be quite sure that no one enters or leaves. Say, listen, Roderick. Where are the others? Cecily is in the kitchen preparing a snack. You mean after all this she's hungry? No, I am. Morgana's in her room drying your clothes. Jasper's in the study. You can stay with him. Here we are, Mr. Pendrel. Oh, thank you. Is that an American custom? Mm -hmm. Does it make the wine taste better? Yes. I'll make one for myself. Keep an eye on this young man, Roderick. I have great plans for him. In the study. March. All right, all right. Jasper, Jasper. I'm sorry you left us. I liked you. Well, I like you both. <laughs> you know, Jasper, there's something I want to ask you. I'm glad we're alone. Who do you think is really doing all this? You don't want to talk, well, I don't blame you. It is your own family. I think it's Roderick. Oh, it's getting cold in here. Oh, it really is chilly. Have you seen the fire tongs, Jasper? Pokers and tongs say the bells of St. John. What did you say, Jasper? What did you say? Jasper! It was chilly, and uh, I went to get the fire tongs, and and uh, I didn't see them here, and there they were around Jasper's neck, and they still are. You were the only one who was with him. Tom, tell him the truth. But he was dead the whole time I was in the room. That's right. I felt him quite cold. There, you see, Uncle Roderick, Tom didn't do it. Until we know which of us is the murderer, we will all go to our rooms, lock ourselves in, and bolt the door. Roderick, what good is that going to do? It'll keep us alive, Mr. Penderell. But you... Do as you're told.
Shall we go? Yes, Roderick. March. <laughs> Ourselves in. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, now you'll all go to your rooms. Potiphar, Cecily, Morgana. Uncle Roderick, don't you think Tom would be safer in my room? No. Not Tom. No, in here where I can keep an eye on him. Oh, just a clock. Good night. What do you think of my little collection, Mr. Pendrell? Nothing like being safe. Gun collecting is my hobby, you know. When one doesn't go out much, one needs diversion. All we Fems have our hobbies. Casper Gamble. <laughs> Jasper had his orchid. <laughs> Agatha, her knitting. Potiphar has been building his ark for 20 years. Have you got a hobby, Mr. Penderall? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. My, uh, no, sir, I don't have a hobby, no. Pity. Well, all we can do now is to wait. Wait for the murderer to show himself. Only four bullets. Now you tell me. Guns are my world, you know. My real world. This one was used to assassinate the Archduke of Hungary. This one belonged to Harkness, the Bluebeard. He killed four of his wives with it. <laughs> this cannon is credited with the sinking of the U.S. Victorine. All hands lost. And this is my piece de resistance. This gun was used by Napoleon himself to kill...
Daddy. Tom. Tom. Bulls eyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret. Where's Cecily? I don't know, Tom. Cecily! Every time someone's been murdered, this thing plays. But it must be a new recording. I pulled out the first one after Casper was killed. Bullseyes and targets say the bells of St. Margaret's. Unless... Unless Casper is still alive. Say it. Say it? The rhyme. Bullseyes and targets, say the bells of St. Margaret's. Bullseyes and targets, say the bells of St. Margaret's. Wait a minute. Bullseyes and targets, say the bells of St. Margaret's. Bullseyes and targets, say the bells of St. Margaret's. It was recorded at normal speed and played back slow. Yes, Tom, it's my voice. No, there's nothing you can do. Now, would you like to hear the end of the rhyme? The final part? When will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey? When I grow rich, say the bells of Shoreditch. Pray, when will that be, say the bells of Stepney? Soon now I know, since the great bell of Bow. No, don't know. Here comes a candle to light you to bed. And here comes a chopper to chop off your head. No, Cecily, don't. I'm going to kill Morgana just as I kill the others. Just as I'm going to kill this house. In five minutes, this house and everyone in it will be dead. Come with me, Tom. We'll be rich. You're mad. Then stay! Another key? Where is it? Potiphar. He's got all the keys of the house. Potiphar. I'll find him and get the... Aha. In five minutes, this house and everyone in it will be dead. What did she mean? Tom, just get me out of here. Four minutes left. She's going to destroy the house, but how? Oh. There's a pattern for murder. The rhymes, the bells, the clocks, the tape recorder. Those clocks. Dynamite. Morgana, how many clocks are there in the house? Clocks? How can you talk about clocks? How many, Morgana? Oh, lots. Tom, get me out of here. No, not lots. The number. Number? Tom, what are you talking We've about? We've got four minutes, Morgana. How many clocks? Six or seven. Well, six or seven. Seven. But please don't shout. All right, all right. Which one strikes first? Huh? Which one? The study. Tom! You stay right where you are. Don't you move. Jasper. Two. 
What's next? Dining room. Dining room. <laughs> Sorry, Aunt Agatha. Roderick's room, Tom. Hurry, hurry! Yours. Why, that's me. One clock missing. And there isn't time. Get out of here. Save yourself. One clock. One clock. Hot Bye. Bye, darling. That's what you think. You're right. We set sail now. Wait, what are you doing with my clock? Wait, I need it. outside. Be nice if you'd come over here and let me out. Yeah, well, uh, no key. Uh, oh, terrible, terrible. It wasn't the end of the world after all. A slight miscalculation, that's all. You wait and see. The end is coming yet. Tom, come over here. Well, uh, listen, Morgana, the thing is, when I, uh, ah! Yes, dear. Let me in, let me in. Let me in! Hit me, Thomas. Go ahead, hit me. I deserve it. What? Daddy, you're speaking. At last I've found someone worth speaking to. Go on, hit me. Okay. No. <laughs> no, no, I couldn't. Ooh. Then take Morgana. 
She's all yours, son. Oh, that's wonderful, Tom. We could be married. Together? You and me? And him? Daddy, get me out of here. I'm afraid that won't be possible, sir. You see, the key is... Uh, was... Excuse me. Well, I don't see how you... <laughs> We could live together in this house, just the two of us, forever and ever. This house forever, with your father and, and Uncle Potiphar? Yes. Well, you see, there's this little girl in Texas. I, oh, no. Well, we're not actually engaged, but Mother was kind of hoping that... Just the two of us, Tom, alone in this house. Every night, Tom, darling. Every night, every night. Not on your life. I'm leaving. No! 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 Thank you. 